Welcome back to the Parasitology Lecture Series. The point of this lecture is to discuss antimalarial treatment, the drugs, and the pharmacologic considerations for treatment. Let's begin. I'd like to start this discussion with this particular quote. Treatment for malaria should not be initiated until diagnosis has been confirmed by laboratory investigations either through microscopy or approved rapid test. Again, the treatment for malaria should not be empirically initiated except for very extreme circumstances. That being said, let's proceed with the pharmacologic discussion. Get your notebooks ready. At this point, I hope you know already the pathophysiology and the life cycle of plasmodium inside the mosquitoes, and the human body. As a quick review, you have your plasmodium sporogonic cycle, your plasmodium exoerythrocytic cycle, or the liver stage, and you have your erythrocytic cycle, or the human blood stage. During its intraerythrocytic life cycle, the parasite is surrounded by three membranes, the parasitiferous vacuolar membrane, which is derived from the host erythrocyte membrane following invasion, the parasite plasma membrane, and the erythrocyte membrane. So during the erythrocytic cycle, once the merozoite invades the red blood cell, it rapidly develops into the ring stage, which is marked by low metabolic activity. At this stage, there is this theory of the big gulp event, wherein the ring stage is actually a theoretical food cup and it is involved in ingesting a massive amount of hemoglobin located inside the parasitized red blood cell. After around 20 hours, the parasite enters the trophozoid stage, which is marked by robust protein, RNA, and DNA synthesis, and this is when the hemoglobin digestion commences. DNA replication occurs in the schizont stage, during which daughter merozoites are formed by asexual mitosis. Each of these are uh, individual merozoites. Merozoites are released from the erythrocytes and initiate a new round of asexual development. You should take note that plasmodium digests more than 80% of the erythrocytic hemoglobin to support parasite growth and asexual reproduction during the intraerythrocytic stage. The bulk of hemoglobin degradation, or hemoglobin metabolism, occurs via a semi-ordered process of proteases contained within the lysosome-like organelle of the parasite, termed the food vacuole. It's a food vacuole. The resulting heme, which is toxic to the parasite, is crystallized into the malarial pigment hemozoin. And your hemozoin is non-toxic, and this conversion of heme to hemozoin is called your heme detoxification process. And this will play a big role in the pharmacologic activity of some antimalarial drugs. So again, please take note of the processes of hemoglobin metabolism and especially heme detoxification. It is also important to go back to the different life cycle stages in the life cycle of your parasite. You have your hypnozoid, you have your ring stage, trophozoid stage, schizon stage, and your ring stage, trophozoid stage, and your schizon stages are all blanketed under the term blood stage. You also have your gametocyte stage. Please take note of the first letters H for hypnozoid, R for ring stage, T for trophozoid. S for schizon, B for blood stage, and G for gametocyte, since we will be using these first uh, letters in our discussion later. When we are discussing antimalarial drugs, please take note that we can basically categorize all of the antimalarials into four distinct pharmacodynamic mechanisms of actions. And these are those four. Please take note of the symbols that I've used. Your first mechanism of action is heme accumulation. 
And this primarily targets the heme detoxification process that we've talked about earlier, the conversion of heme to its non-toxic form, the hemozoin. You also have hydrogen peroxide or free radical formation as symbolized by these two icons. You also have blocking of protein or folic acid synthesis. And you also have interference of the electron transport chain or ETC of the parasite. I've taken the liberty of collecting resources and collating them into this single antimalarial drug pharmacodynamic slide. If you learned something, feel free to share this video. Don't stop learning.